So before I get into the content of the video, I should note that obviously I haven't made a video in a long time. I've done some debates, I've done maybe five or six debates in the last, I don't know, five or six months, but I haven't made any videos on my YouTube channel in at least a year. And I'm gonna try to get back in the habit of making some regular content. We'll just have to wait and see if that intention is one that I actually follow through with. But in any case, what I'm thinking right now anyway is that it's just gonna be audio basically on YouTube for the most part. Occasionally there'll be stuff with a full kind of visual presentation, but for the most part, it's just gonna be audio and based off of things that I'm putting on my blog so that if you want to go and see the tables and charts and the relevant things like that or check the sources, uh, you can always just go to the blog and see those things. That's what I'm going to try for a while anyway, and then I'll see how that goes, both in terms of how other people react to it and how I feel about continually doing it, and then, you know, make decisions about future behavior in the future on that basis of the, uh, what will then be the past. Anyway, getting to the actual point of the video, this is going to be a video about the idea that recently Hispanic Americans have been moving away from the Democrat Party and into the Republican Party. Historically, like if you look at U.S. presidential elections from 1972 to 2016, on average, Republicans got 31% of the Hispanic vote and Democrats got 64%. So that's a net break in the favor of Democrats by 32 points. But according to a recent, but various sources of recent data have made people wonder whether or not that's going to change very soon. So there was a recent poll out of the uh, Wall Street Journal in which Hispanics said that if the election was held today, they would break for Biden by a single point, 44% to Biden, 43% for Trump. The same poll found 37% of Hispanics would vote for a generic Republican for Congress and 37% for a generic Democrat, a straight tie. Now, there are two things to note. In the first place, obviously, that's a strong departure from the historical norm. I already talked about the presidential historical norm in terms of the Congress. In 2018, the most recent congressional race, Hispanics voted 69% for Democrat, 29% for Republicans. So if they now voted 37-37, that would be an outrageous change. But of course, uh, we should also note that they're not going to vote 37-37 because that would leave a huge number of Hispanics voting for neither party. And it seems very unlikely that they're going to massively you know, support the Green Party or the Libertarian Party or something like this. So that in part, this is being driven by Hispanics moving away from Democrats into an undecided category and not moving straightforwardly into the Republican category. Now, and that is consistent with some Gallup polling. So Gallup polling in 2021 shows that in the first half of the year, there was a net 32-point advantage in favor of Democrats in terms of the party ID of Hispanic Americans. So 58% identified as Democrat or lean Democrat, 26% identified as Republican or lean Republican. But in the second half of 2021, that it changed from a net Democrat advantage of 32 points to a net advantage of 28 points. And importantly, the number who leaned Republican was 26% at the first half of the year and the second half of the year. What had happened is that 4% of Hispanics went from identifying as Democrats to neither, furthering the idea that what we're seeing here is more a move away from Democrats as opposed to into Republicans. Uh, if you look at favorability data, we can see that over the course of 2021, the favorability of Biden fell among every racial group, but mostly among Hispanics, felt most steeply among Hispanics. Uh, at the beginning of 2021, he had a favorability rating of over 70% among Hispanics, and now it's below half. And importantly, these changes, for the most part in the polling, are quite large. The party ID isn't as large, but those changes in who people actually intend to vote for are quite large, and they're large enough to overcome the degree of error that is intrinsic in trying to pull elections from a long ways away. So, on average, polling gets more accurate the closer you get to an election. Obviously, we're not right about to have any election, and so you might be skeptical of talking about election polling. But the fact of the matter is, about a year out, polling on average in the United States is about five points off. And these swings are by much more than five points. And so, while they may be overstating the case, right, it might be that the change is lesser than what they're actually uh, indicating in the polls, it is unlikely that these polls are entirely explained by that kind of error that always arises trying to pull something way before it happens. Now, if we're talking about trying to predict specific elections, then, of course, we also need to talk about the Virginia governor election that just happened. Because in that, exit polling showed that Hispanics actually voted for the Republican for governor by a 12-point margin. And that is a huge change from how Hispanics in general and in Virginia have voted in the past. Uh, but at the same time, I think there's an intrinsic bias in that kind of data because it's based on people leaving polling stations and being polled. But ever since the pandemic started, there's been this Republican bias in exit polling due to the fact that Democrats are overwhelmingly 
disproportionately voting by mail. So if this change is happening, then we need some kind of explanation for it. And so it's worth briefly reviewing the relationship between political ideology and partisanship among uh, Hispanic Americans. For a long time, Republicans have wanted Hispanics to vote Republican on the basis of certain right-wing Catholic social views that they have. Uh, but the problem has been that among Hispanics, for instance, having a right-wing view on abortion or on gay marriage has no relation to who they vote for. And this is not true in other racial groups, but among American Hispanics, that is the case. And more generally, while there is a relationship between overall self-identified ideology and voting such that more conservative Hispanics tend to vote more Republican than liberal Hispanics, even among conservative Hispanics, overall, they have historically voted uh, for Democrats. And it's also worth briefly noting that this is true if you look at the policy issue of immigration, that Hispanics who want to decrease immigration still vote Democrat. And we can see in the real world, there have been these analyses of congressional races in which the Numbers USA group gives politicians grades, basically, on how, from their perspective, good they are on immigration, which is to say how restrictionist they are. And so we can ask the question, when Republicans run who are more pro-immigration on the basis of their Numbers USA score, do they do better with Hispanics? And the answer to that question is no. And so looking at all that, you might be pretty pessimistic, as many people have been, about the possibility of Hispanics moving over to the Republican side. And that hopefully should increase our sense of, of needing an explanation. Now, COVID is obviously an issue that we don't have historical data on because it has not historically existed. And COVID is an issue a lot of people care about. But the polling I was able to find showed that only 24% of Hispanic Americans disapprove of how Biden has dealt with COVID. So that seems like an unlikely source. Uh, in the governor's race for Virginia, a lot of people talked about critical race theory. Now, critical race theory is not a new issue exactly, but it is a newly talked about issue or it's a new way of talking about an old issue is probably the best way to put it. And here, unlike in a lot of issues, you see a big split between African-Americans and Hispanic Americans. So among that subset of people who know what critical race theory is, or at least who say they do, 53% of Hispanics have an unfavorable view of it compared to just 22% of African Americans. And that's not totally shocking. If you look at past research on Hispanic Americans, they have uh, kind of mixed feelings about things like affirmative action and related policies, reparations and such. And very importantly, unlike some of the other issues I looked at, you know, I said before that Hispanics who are right wing on issues like abortion and immigration and gay marriage still vote Democrat and have historically. But Hispanics who are right wing on racial issues actually do vote uh, Republican. And so I think that's a pretty plausible hypothesis, given how much critical race theory has been talked about in the news recently. And then the economy, of course, is always something uh, that people have on their mind. And it's an issue that the research is mixed on in terms of the question, do economically right wing Hispanics vote Republican or Democrat? It depends on the specific economic issue you look at. But I would be surprised if the economy has nothing to do with this. Um, I mean, satisfaction of the economy is quite low right now, and specifically among Hispanics, YouGov polling shows that only 29% of Hispanics think the economy is getting better. I think this economic explanation also has the virtue of explaining why it might be that they're moving away from the Democrat Party, but not specifically to the Republican Party, because it's not like everyone's talking right now about how Republicans have this alternative plan that's going to fix the economy. And so while none of this is certain, there's a lot of ambiguity and a lot of uncertainty in a lot of this, trying to figure out how people are going to vote is hard, trying to figure out why they vote the way they vote is even harder. But it, there are a lot of data signals indicating that there's been some kind of move away from the Democrat Party among Hispanics. And if we had to guess, I think that racial politics in the form of critical race theory and the economy are probably our best guesses as to why that might have happened. And it'll be interesting to see going forward if Republicans can capitalize on this moment and move these disaffected Hispanics from the undecided uh, or neither categories of party ID to the Republican category. And there you go, a short video. That's another thing I'm going to try to do is make videos reasonably short, not because I think that that's necessarily what will do the best view-wise, but because they're much easier to make, especially easier to make regularly and reliably, so I think that that's probably the best move, at least for the time being. But yeah, if you like the video, you know, like and subscribe and all that kind of thing, and uh, if you feel like making shorter, more audio-driven videos and pointing people to written material in order to see charts and tables and sources and that sort of thing is just an absolutely horrible idea, uh, then, you know, feel free to comment about that as well. Uh, there you go.